Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Ortiz, and I am here to talk to you about merging units and cross-training here at Pepsol Public Library. First, we'll get to the who, the what, and the why of this project. So, who initiated this project? It was actually initiated by our library director, uh, Dr. Dewey, and the operations manager, uh, Joanna Cole. They believe that merging the five units, which are outreach services, online and reference services, adult services, and children's services, oh, and access services, will, uh, will improve our overall service to our community. Uh, each unit will be cross-trained so that all employees are more knowledgeable in each function. There are a total of 32 staff members overall each of whom have a significant investment in their current position. Here is a quick glimpse of a flowchart of a strategic planning cycle. It all begins with a simple question, how can we improve? Will merging units at Pepsol Public Library improve our organization? Exploring the benefits of merging. Okay, so before we move forward and set up an action plan for the project, let's discuss the benefits of merging and cross-training. One, how will this result in better, better service? Um, like I said, there are 32 staff members here at Pepsol Public Library. Will this improve performance? What are some of the current factors affecting performance and hindering the quality of service? Will cross-training improve employee proficiency levels? These are all excellent questions to explore before we undertake this project. Uh, number two, is this a cost-saving measure? In today's society, we always have to ask about the bottom line. Uh, how will this save money? Is the organization considering a workforce reduction? Or is this simply a way to leverage current employee talents as, instead of recruiting new talent? Three, will this improve efficiency and provide a smoother workflow? Let's create some real life scenarios about how this will improve efficiency. At Pepsol Public Library, we have two full-time staff members that handle interlibrary loan. This is a part of access services. If we cross train the entire staff to be able to manage interlibrary loans, um, will this be more or less efficient? Will patrons receive their resources quicker Will staff be able to manage IL uh, circulation easier? Will this eliminate the need for staff directly responsible for this function? This is one of many scenarios that must be explored before we implement an action project. So the big picture, um, how does this affect Pepsol Public Library overall? How does this affect us in the long run? All very interesting questions to explore before we uh, set out a plan for our project overall. All right, uh, we need to perform a stakeholder analysis. Again, before we start the project, a stakeholder analysis is crucial. Um, with a stakeholder analysis, we'll identify who gains and who loses as a result of the merger. Um, some of the stakeholders here at Pepsol Public Library include the staff, our patrons, library board, city council, and friends of the library. Uh, will some departments effectively lose resources while others gain? There's absolutely no way to keep every person happy during a reorganization of this magnitude. So we need to identify who can afford who we can afford to upset without sacrificing morale. We need to be prepared. Um, there will be naysayers from all stakeholder groups. This project will yield significant organizational change. It's huge. And of course, we all know change is not always easy. Most of the time, it's not. Um, we must be prepared to soothe the doubts and reservations of our stakeholders, including but not limited to the employees. I'm sure that we'll have naysayers from all stakeholder groups this includes our employees, our patrons, 
uh, library council, friends of the library, so we need to be prepared to handle those naysayers. Um, there will be saboteurs. Uh, they'll try to impede our transition. We need to expect, expect employee resentment because a merger means their jobs will change. Um, Will the benefits subdue the woes and anxieties of the employees? We still have yet to find that out. Um, there will be productivity loss. We need to plan for a temporary productivity loss because there will be a learning curve. Service may briefly suffer as employees are cross-trained in new areas. So, how can we prepare for these barriers? The pitch. The pitch is extremely important. Number one, we need to communicate goals clearly and frame those goals within the context of our specific organizational culture. Uh, number two, we need to stress the benefits to each stakeholder. Three, Form a group of champions who will serve as liaisons, generate ideas, and provide valuable input. And finally, we need to set a timeline. So before we proceed with the merger, uh, we need to be able to clearly communicate the benefits to all stakeholders, especially employees and patrons. I would say that those are probably our uh, two primary stakeholder groups, and they need to be aware of the changes, what's going on. They need to be a part of it. Pitching this project is the first step toward a successful outcome. In order to form the pitch, we need to clearly address each point and develop a comprehensive strategy. By exploring how we will pitch the merger to our stakeholders, we can more dependably determine whether or not this project is viable. So creating the pitch will help us identify some of the factors that may determine whether or not this project is doable, if it's worth changing all of the units, if it's worth merging all of the units, and cross-training our employees. This project will require the collective efforts of the entire organization. We need to get the whole group on board for this to work. Let's plan for success. Um, three main things. Don't hurry the river. Show benefit to the organization and the stakeholders and look for a champion. So these are our key factors for success. Number one, don't hurry the river. Things take time. We need to develop a strategy for involving people and getting buy-in and implementation over time. Number two, show benefit to the organization and the stakeholders. Although a uh, logical technical benefit to the organization is, be uh, is basic, the stakeholders all have their own selfish reasons to support or reject such an effort. Benefit from the standpoint of each individual must be shown and understood. Um, everyone from our, our director, Dr. Dewey, to um, our page, uh, Wendy, who puts away the books, each person in between, you know, from the highest level to a part-time page. They all need to understand the benefits of why we are implementing change in our organization. We need to look for a champion, or champions rather. We can't try to carry this on our own. Um, as the project manager, I will do my best to, to you know, champion support, garner support for the change if we decide to go with this solution. But if we don't have champions, several supporters from each unit, from each stakeholder group, in fact, then we're going at it alone, and that's not a good thing. We need to develop strong support and avoid labeling the effort as our idea, or as the director's idea, or as the operations manager idea. It needs to be a collective idea where there's tons of input into the the decision-making process. We need to look for support at a sponsor level and create a critical mass of support. Ideally, what I would like to see is a representative from each group letting us know how this affects them. So who and how? Who needs to be involved? 
and how do we communicate with each other. Okay, so once we identify the champions and determine who needs to be involved during the crucial infancy stages of this project, um, let, let's identify those people first off. Uh, we need to have unit representatives. So from each of the five units that are merging, we'd like to have a representative from each of those units. Library users, these are the people that we serve and it's crucial to have their input and to make them feel like they're part of the decision-making process. Our library board is also um, a crucial stakeholder group and the friends of the library. We also need to decide how we're going to communicate. Um, so are we going to have something like a town hall forum where everybody joins together and discusses their ideas, we kind of brainstorm and, and decide on a way to make decisions? Um, which brings me to the next point. Who actually makes the final deci decision? Will it be Dr. Dewey? Will we have um, a voting session? These are all things that need to be considered before we undertake this project. And finally, something that's really important and sometimes this gets forgotten is our deadlines. Uh, in order to, to keep this project fresh and alive, we need to set deadlines and stick to them. So let's just put it out there. Is this project viable? Um, if the project is viable, we'll establish relationships and meet together face to face to collaboratively decide how best to merge and cross train. Uh, this is going to take time. It's a huge reorganization effort and if we decide to go forth with this project, we're going to need the input of, of tons of people, of everybody from each stakeholder group. However. If we determine that no, this project is not viable, there's alternatives. If we determine that merging the units is not viable, we can continue to explore the idea of creating an organizational culture of learning where cross-training is the norm. Uh, exploring the dynamic capabilities of our human resources can only prove beneficial. This will help us maintain evolutionary fitness so that staff is not placed in a pigeonhole where they do not have an opportunity to learn or develop. So, this brings me to our shared vision at Pepsol Public Library. Um, in order to create a shared vision, we should look at a few things. We need to look at where we are and where we've been. Um, we need to identify where we currently are and where we want to be. What are the steps we need to get to our desired state? We need to contemplate a new direction. So together with key stakeholders, we can collaborate on a new direction for Pepsol Public Library. And we need to build the vision together. So again, this is not my idea, this is not Dr. Dewey's idea, this is not the operations manager I, manager's idea. It needs to be our idea as an organization. So after a brainstorming process, we can decide the best practices to build this vision and strategize methods to achieve goals. So before proceeding with the development of a plan to merge these units, we need to explore our options and decide on a shared organizational vision. So, to wrap things up, before we begin planning how we're going to merge our units, we must collectively decide if this is really the direction that would most benefit Pepsol Public Library. Once we have that clear vision, we can rally a project team together and get us moving in the right direction. So now that we're planning for a brighter future at Pepsol Public Library, I'd like to end with a quote from management expert Gary Hamill. He says, you can't build an adaptable organization without adaptable people. And individuals change only when they have to or when they want to. So let's create a shared vision that all stakeholders want to participate in. Thank you for your time.